The loose chessmen were found on the Isle of Lewis in Uig Bay in the Outer Hebrides at some point before April 1831. In April 1831 they come to public knowledge because they're presented to the Society of Antiquities for Scotland in Edinburgh. The people of Lewis have a great deal of attachment to the chessmen and as I discovered quite recently, the community of Uig feel that perhaps loose chessmen ought more accurately to be called the Uig Bay chessmen. The precise circumstances of their discovery remain a mystery and it's shrouded with lots of folklore on the island so we, we have different stories of how they were taken from um, a shipwrecked uh, cabin boy who um, had um, fled and was then murdered by a peasant who stole the chessmen hid them in a sand dune and revealed um, his crime on the scaffold when he was um, hanged. So these kind of stories have evolved around the discovery of the chessmen and the simple fact is that their discovery was not recorded the way that an archaeological find would be recorded today. What's strange about the loose chessmen for many modern commentators is that they were found within a sand dune on the Isle of Lewis, uh, where they were placed for reasons that we will never know. But what we do know is that from ancient times onwards and right up to the relatively recent past, the ground was the safest place to store your valuables. So X does mark the spot. These were hidden treasure. And they were secreted in the ground in this way because whoever put them there wanted to come back at some point and retrieve them. And these ivory pieces, they may not be silver or gold, but they were considered to be very valuable at the time. So how did the Lewis Chessmen wind up on the Isle of Lewis? At the time that the Lewis Chessmen were made, the Outer Hebrides formed part of the Norwegian Empire. Within that, Trondheim, uh, one of the most important cities of medieval Norway, um, was famed for its ivory products and was one of the main centres where walrus ivory tusks were delivered for carving. Um, and it's likely that these pieces were carved in Trondheim. It's likely that they were the stock in trade of a merchant because the chessmen are not alone in the hoard. We have constituent parts of perhaps four chess sets altogether and we have other associated pieces. We have um, these discs for a game known as tables, tabulae, a little bit like backgammon. And the table men were, were found um, also with a very intricately carved belt buckle. Um, so it seems that it's more about a merchant with several things that he wants to sell. Of the 78 chess pieces found in the hoard, 67 are at the British Museum and 11 at the National Museum Scotland in Edinburgh. The British Museum pieces are probably the most well-travelled items in the museum. They've travelled from Taiwan to Canada, Australia, um, and of course they've travelled repeatedly to the Isle of Lewis. Most recently, the British Museum has agreed a long-term loan of six pieces to Lewis Castle in Stornoway. <laughs>